If you're struggling with feelings of loneliness, shame, anger, and frustration, you're not alone. I'm Beretta Fleur, and I'm an author, podcaster, and confidence coach. And today, I'm going to explore with you the three emotions that we feel during personal or societal crisis and how we can use these emotions as tools so that we can move forward and come out on the other side of a crisis with more empathy, character, and fulfillment. Hello and welcome to another edition of Beretta Fleur Du Jour podcast videos. I'm your host, Beretta Fleur. If you're not familiar with my work, I'm an author, podcaster, and confidence coach, and I help women and entrepreneurs just like you lead happier, more fulfilled, more successful lives. And I do that through coaching, storytelling, and content. All of this content can be found in more detail along with exercises that you can do on my podcast, BarettaFleur.com slash podcast. If you wanna delve a little bit deeper into this content, I do offer one-on-one -on -one coaching coaching, berettafleur.com slash coaching. We'll have all that information for you, plus a free quiz. So let's get started. Today, I wanted to touch on the emotions in crisis, what we feel when we're in a societal or a personal crisis. Life isn't predictable, and a lot of times we do experience crisis, whether personal or societal. So let's dig a little bit into the three emotions that we feel when we experience a personal or societal crisis. So the first emotion that we often feel when we're experiencing a personal or societal crisis is the feeling of loneliness. Now, in a societal crisis, it really doesn't make sense that if we're all experiencing the same thing, such as the pandemic, but earlier the Boston Marathon bombings, school shootings, the 9-11 attacks, we're all experiencing these feelings. And all of us, somehow feel alone and cut off from each other. Now, that happens because we are hardwired to connect. Our brains, our primal need is to connect with others and to feel like we belong and that we're accepted. And a lot of times what happens is in grief, in emotional crisis, we feel the need to run and hide we feel the need to disconnect. Even though we're a herd, sometimes in crisis, we scatter. And that can lead to a feeling of loneliness. Now, in something such as a pandemic, when we're forced to have alone time or we're forced to quarantine, even more so. But this can also happen um, if you're experiencing an illness, which can make you feel cut off from healthy people. It can happen if you're getting a divorce um, or if you're going through a grief such as the loss of a family member, loved one, maybe a parent, even though other people go through this, your grief and your emotions in crisis are separating you and making you feel lonely. What can also be true is that you're so raw from your feelings in this emotional or personal crisis that you're pulling back from people reaching out to you. It's like a hot, hand on a stove. You don't want to touch it because it hurts, right? So if somebody says things to you that might make you think more about your emotion in your crisis, you don't want to engage with that. You want to feel better. So that can also make you feel like you need to withdraw from people and from society when you're in a crisis. So how can we deal with this loneliness? I don't have a quick fix for loneliness, but I can tell you that it is infinitely better for you at this time to reach out, to look outward, to reach out to people. And if you want to not think about what's making you sad right now, give. Look outward and see what you can give in that time. Play around with it. Try to connect with people. Try to reach out. Let people distract you from your loneliness and your crisis and let people in even if it feels like it's not what you want to do. The second emotion that I want to cover when we feel 
a emotional, personal, or societal crisis is the feeling of shame. And shame can be a feeling, but it can also be a verb, as in feeling shamed. In my podcast, Emotions in Crisis, I did go into a personal experience, which I didn't want to make people uncomfortable, but I felt like it was the best example I knew where um, shame can be transformed and transfigured. Uh, several years ago, I had met my husband late in life and it was the first marriage for both of us and neither of us had kids. And I really didn't feel like I was ready to have kids earlier in life. So we started trying to have kids. We were trying to build a family. It was in our mid to late thirties and um, it just didn't work. And what was worse about it was that <laughs> no one had an answer other than you're old, you know? <laughs> so, um, you know, we did all these tests. I mean, I can't even tell you sometimes we got pregnant. It never lasted. And that happened several times over. And it was like, it was heartbreaking. It was really rough. And what got me about that whole personal crisis that I was experiencing was that I felt so much shame, which is weird, but I did. I felt shame. I felt like, you know, why didn't my body work? Did we wait too long? Why I messed around with stupid relationships in my life? I should have been trying to, you know, get married and find my husband, you know, everything that I could think of to blame myself for. There was always something that I came up with in my head. And what it really boiled down to, honestly, was that I had lived in blissful ignorance that my body wouldn't work when I wanted it to. I had gone through life with this almost cavalier attitude of, I'll have kids whenever I want to. I'll decide who and when, and it'll just happen when I want it to. And I never really understood. I mean, I heard about, you know, people having miscarriages and having trouble having kids or not being able to have kids. And I always thought, oh, well, you know, whatever, you know, that won't happen to me. Or that only happened because, you know, they're really old. Or, you know, oh, they probably led an unhealthy lifestyle. I never really let that pain in. And I just kind of blew it off. So when it happened to me, I just felt ashamed because I had had such a cavalier attitude and a blissful ignorance against the kind of pain that can exist for couples who struggle with fertility. When we feel shame, that can be because we haven't been in tune to that type of pain before and we're ashamed. We're ashamed of our ignorance. We're ashamed that we just never knew or we feel foolish for thinking that everything would be okay and everything would work out. We feel foolish for taking our health for granted or our loved ones for granted or our, our peaceful society um, for granted in these times. How we can turn that from feeling shame is try to feel empathy. Call upon your humanity and think about now you know what it feels like to be part of a society in crisis. Now you know what it feels like to understand when your body won't work. Try to feel empathy and compassion for everybody in the world who has ever experienced this type of pain. Because once you do that, what happens is you become one of the stronger people. You become one of the people who have gone through something and you can start saying, oh, I know what it feels like to go through that. I am so sorry that that happened to you. And that allows you to connect with people on a deeper level and have a lot more character and have a lot more to give back to the world. I know it's not easy, believe me, I've lived it, but if you can just take the baby steps, you can start to turn your shame into empathy and compassion. Okay, emotion number three for being in societal or personal crisis. Emotion number three is tricky because it has a 
bad, bad legacy. It's anger. When you feel something has happened that's crisis driven, right? You feel angry. And sometimes that anger, if it isn't expressed, goes deeper into depression and loneliness and shame. So when you feel anger and you don't acknowledge it or you try to stuff it down because it's not a pretty emotion and because it can be a hurtful emotion or maybe we're taught that, you know, anger can't be felt when you're also feeling love, that can be really tricky. But when you're in emotional or societal crisis, don't push down your anger sit with your anger. What is it trying to tell you? What is it trying to show you about what you're experiencing? Oftentimes, anger happens because we care so deeply that we feel protective of whatever is going on or whatever is being threatened. And when we care, we get angry. That's a righteous anger. So how can you sit with your anger and think about, can you grow out of this personal or societal crisis? Can you help others? How can you further our society and make it better when it's in crisis? Mr. Rogers has a quote that says, look to the helpers. And he learned that from his mom when he was watching horrible things on the news. She would always say, Fred, look to the helpers. Where are the helpers? And I think that that's a good quote and I think it rings true in pretty much every crisis situation. Where are the helpers? And can you be one of those helpers? Get angry, but have it be a righteous anger. Have it be an anger that burns clean and doesn't destroy. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please go ahead and subscribe and give it a like. I am also on Rumble. If you'd like to learn more about my coaching, please visit berettafleur.com coaching for your free quiz.